Coming up on Small Town Big Deal. Welcome to Frank's Diner. Come on in. Rodney okay. pulls Flip, more Rodney. than his so weight. Hell no, that already got flipped. Oh, sorry. Here. <laughs> I'm working for Tim's. Table 14. Top, top. Plus, watch out, Willy Wonka. We're inside the world famous Jelly Belly Factory. We make 1,680 beans per second here at Jelly Belly. What flavor is America's number one? And discover the magical way they make all their colorful flavors from the delightful lemon to the disgusting. I know what they do. Six pounds of food in 45 minutes? I, I know I couldn't have. <laughs> I wouldn't bet too strong against that, but we're about to see somebody try. Welcome to Small Town Big Deal. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. And we are inside Frank's Diner, the oldest continuously operating lunch car diner in America. Where the plates are really big and the service <laughs> is pretty saucy. Hey, where did Sam get back to work? The first thing you notice inside this historic eatery is the energy. It is constant commotion. You just got to keep moving here. Oh, and follow the pancake. The second thing is personality. Frank's is filled with delightful devilish attitude. So one of the Niners' most famous slogans, and it's right on the back of the t-shirts, order what you want, eat what you get. Welcome to Frank's Diner. Come on in. Julie Rittmiller and her husband, Kevin Irvin, have owned this fast-paced place for 11 years. Can you believe they had no prior experience in the restaurant business? So, you jumped into the frying pan here, I mean. So what possessed you? Oh, uh, alcohol. <laughs> Kevin's kidding, of course. The truth is they couldn't resist owning a historic slice of Kenosha, Wisconsin that has been operating nonstop since it first opened in 1926. We're caretakers. That's how we always looked at ourselves. They are the current guardians over what began with Anthony Franks, the man who started it all by spending $7,500 on a stationary restaurant built to resemble a train car. These dining cars, later just called diners, started popping up all over America in the 1920s. And all these years later, Frank still honors the diner tradition of serving homestyle comfort food, featuring their steaming hot signature dish, the garbage plate. This is the first ticket, garbage plate, first one. A full order is made of five eggs, hash browns, green peppers, onions, and your choice of meat. I gotta come for the garbage plate. That's the only thing to get here. It is so <laughs> much food, but wait, there's more, way more. Franks dares the bravest eaters to attempt the Red Men Challenge. Challenge. That's why Mike Steinborn is here. Wow. They're as big as the plate. He has to finish three huge pancakes, plus toast, plus the garbage plate, all in just 45 minutes. Yeah, that's, uh, that's You have to be pretty gutsy to attempt it. Hundreds have tried, but only a handful have their name on the wall. Best of luck. Okay, I'm going to see your name on the plaque. All right. We'll check back on Mike's progress, but first, more of the diner's history. It's as rich as the syrup on those pancakes, and famous too. Turns out the Three Stooges, Duke Ellington, Liberace, and more recently, Mark Ruffalo have all eaten here. So tell us about the phone under the counter. Yes. Back in the day, the owner's office was downstairs. So he had a phone installed, but it only calls downstairs. It was gambling and they were having alcohol also yeah. down there that was illegal at the time. Yeah. So. Hurry up, how are you? The cops are coming. Put the booze down. <laughs> right now, the only worry is about Mike getting all this chow down. Remember, it's six pounds of food. So Mike, you're almost done with your pancakes. How are you feeling about everything? Good. Good. So you think you got a shot? Oh, I think I got a shot, so. Good luck. Eating all this food is a big job, but so is serving it. 15-year-old Naomi Miller just started working here today. How would you describe your first day at Frank Steiner? It was chaotic to start. It's yeah. hard being a waitress. It's a lot new. Of course, the same can be said of being a cook here. But Sandy Cornell makes it look easy as she puts us to work. 
All right, that one gets five eggs. How, five many, eggs. how many is already in there? Uh, one. Then we just go over and we flip all the way over, all the way down the line. Okay, flip, Rodney. Let's go. Hey, no, hey. no, that already got flipped. Oh, sorry. Here. <laughs> and this is called a mess? This is a garbage plate. I mean, what you did might, might be a little closer, but we're getting there. Table 14, chop, chop. And how did we do? Hey, looking good. Well, yeah. that's because you did most No, 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 no. Okay. Unfortunately, Mike's not looking so good as he starts on the second plate. Going down now. Oh. So the crowd tries to spur him on. You can do it. He can do it. I'm his biggest cheerleader. Go for it. And really, that's the most important thing you notice at Frank's Diner. Everyone here feels connected. This is my family. There's a group of us that come every morning, and we're just family here. I'm like here once a week, and if I'm not here, I'm like freaking out. I'm like, oh, I need to go to Frank's. What keeps me coming back is just the feeling of family here, the personalities, the locals. It's family. It's all sorts of things. And this family right. still supports Mike, even after he has to lay down his fork and fork. So would you do it again? No. <laughs> and as for the future of Frank's Diner, it's in safe hands with Kevin and Julie, who can't wait for the 100th anniversary. I don't want to be the guy that ended up closing Frank's. Yeah. yeah. I don't want that on me, so uh, that keeps us motivated. That's a huge driving force. Just keep serving up those large helpings of food and fellowship, and it's sure to be here another 100 years. Coming up, a tasty treat enjoyed by people everywhere. How did Jelly Bellies end up in space? But will some beans go belly up when we take over the production process? Not that much? No, it's okay. That's good? Yeah. No, no, no! <laughs>Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. We have a sweet treat for you today. It is about one of the most famous candies in the world. And it has a distinction of being in both the White House and outer space. And now this jelly belly is going in Rodney's belly. Oh, nope, we gotta catch it. Ready? Come on, ready? Oh, ow, did that hurt? I hurt your tooth. It didn't hurt, but it hit my tooth. <laughs> ready? Ready? Oh! It's a magical experience to explore the Jelly Belly factory. The rainbow of colors, the fruity aromas. It's kind of like stepping into this 1971 classic Gene Wilder movie. Do you ever feel like you're Willy Wonka? In a sense, I absolutely do. I mean, who could work in a better place than a candy factory? Jeff Brown oversees the operation. Jelly Belly operates factories in Chicago, Thailand, and here in Fairfield, California, which is the main headquarters located less than 50 miles from San Francisco. This place is really big. How many beans are you actually making? Well, it's pretty amazing, but we make 1,680 beans per second here at Jelly Belly. This facility is so large, it can hold 200 million Jelly Bellies. The company's been making jelly beans since the early 1960s, and jelly bellies were officially introduced in 1976. But the candy business has been in Lisa Roland Brasher's family for more than a century. My great-great-grandfather came to America from Germany in 1869 and began making candy there. We're actually in our sixth generation now of candy making. The company employs close to 700 people, and they are all considered part of the family. We have employees that have been here 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, and we're so grateful to them for everything they do. Did you get teary eyed on me? I did. <laughs> I'm known for that. I'm the crier. That's okay. Yes, I am. I did you see that? I try to keep it in. No. Okay. <laughs> Humans eat 15 billion jelly beans a year. To give you a visual, and to end, it would wrap around the earth five times. But the most famous fan Jelly Bellies ever had is President Ronald Reagan. In fact, three and a half tasty tons were delivered to Washington, D.C. for his inauguration. In 1980, he got filmed holding a logo package of ours. Our sales at that time were $8 million, and in one year, we doubled to $16 million because of the notoriety of that. Lisa, how did Jelly Bellies end up in space? Well, in 1983, 
Ronald Reagan sent as a surprise gift jelly belly beans up into space with the astronauts, and it was so amazing. Back here on Earth, the process of making jelly bellies can seem a bit otherworldly. They've created more than 100 different flavors, and there is definitely no rush in the process. So this is going to probably surprise a lot of you guys, but it takes 7 to 14 days to make a jelly belly bean, sometimes longer. The difference in time is because some beans take longer to dry, and all these molds give each bean its own unique shape. It smells so good. Yeah, that, and that's really the difference with the jelly belly is you add that flavor in the center of the bean yeah. as well as the shell. That double dose of flavor on the outside and the inside is what sets jelly bellies apart from all the rest along with their hands-on approach. So it's really candy makers that are making this. Yeah, right? these are candy makers. This is not just a, a factory of machines. Right. This is a factory of candy makers. Mm -hmm. This is where they add flavor and color to the jelly mix, which is called slurry. And they let us try adding to the slurry. OK. This batch is cinnamon. Oh, so they're hot when they go on. And then we take a sample to ensure that the color in every batch looks exactly the same. You're right, they all look the same. The human touch continues at our next stop, the panning department. This is where they add the crunchy outer shell. The process takes about two hours. So this is Jose Sanchez. Jose has been in the candy business for 32 years. Wow! And he's going to show you how we put a shell on that center. OK. Oh, one more. Jose is adding sugar, which sticks to the center to build the shell. He makes sure we don't mess it up. Am I doing OK, Jose? Yes. Would you say perfect or just good? <laughs> just good. Or good, doing well. Oh, very well. About that much? No, it's OK. That's good? Yes. No, no, no. <laughs> Rodney, get better. OK, clearly, Jose was coached to say that. <laughs> and quality control was another big job. Eagle-eyed workers weed out any irregularities. It might be three beans stuck together. Ooh, a three Could for be one. A, a different shape, a different color. And so rather than those going off into waste, we pack those up as a belly flop, and we have a lot of happy customers. No doubt about that. But what's the one flavor that some customers want banned? And how exactly do they make those wonderfully wow. disgusting bean boozled flavors? Oh, <laughs> I got rotten egg. I got rotten egg too. <laughs> those secrets are up next. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. We're at the Jelly Belly Factory in Fairfield, California. It's no exaggeration to say these candies are a work of art. Over the years, we've had a couple different artists. Now we use a wonderful lady named Kristen Cummings, and she can make an art piece in about six weeks. About how many beans will she use in a portrait? There's about 12,000 beans per portrait. They are amazing. So, besides being delicious, Jelly Bellies are also great eye candy. But most would argue that Jelly Bellies are best enjoyed in your belly. What is the public's favorite? So, the number one Jelly Belly is Berry Cherry. Very, very popular. The only flavor to ever pass up Berry Cherry is kind of a polarizing flavor, and it's buttered popcorn. You either love it, love it. or you hate, hate it. it. We actually get letters that say, discontinue that flavor, it's so gross, how can you make that? And it's like, it's our number two flavor. Inside the gift shop, we decide to take an informal poll and ask a couple of candy experts their opinion. The kids prove that buttered popcorn is indeed a love or hate thing. I don't know, I just like to enjoy them, like piece by piece, except buttered popcorn. I like them all except for the popcorn. One thing we all can agree on, jelly bellies pack a powerful taste bud punch. But with all those varieties, can we accurately guess the flavor? They put us to the test. Dr. Really Pepper. Good. Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper. Yeah. 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 I'm the tip of my tongue. One for Jan. But don't count me out yet. Okay. Sherbet. I, ice cream sherbet. Orange sherbet. All right. Very good. One to one. One to one. 
we try to break the tie ourselves, but the third flavor stumps us. So we look to the families and join the factory tour to find somebody who can help. And this young man gets just the hint we need. I know this cake, but I don't know the name. I'm gonna hope that you don't know this flavor, but they do. So there's your hint. Strawberry daiquiri. Strawberry daiquiri. <laughs> Jelly Belly also has a collection of flavors you may not want to guess. In 2008, they created a line of not-so-tasty candy for their infamous Bean Boozled game, and we get tricked into that pungent production we'll room. We'll take you to our next area here. You know, I gotta check on something. Go ahead and in. I'll be right back. Okay. All right. <laughs> this must be. Oh, this is the room. Did he lock us in? You get back here. Yep, this is where the zaniest flavors get made. From stinky socks to dead fish, even the smell is awful. What do you think it might be? Boogers. Booger, you are so good at this game. Man, I, I didn't know. I'm, why do you know that? Bean boozled beans are so foul smelling, they have to be kept separate so they don't contaminate the yummy ones. And how do they create the yucky flavors? Well. One time it took a fortunate misfire. So we had a contest and one of the flavors that someone picked for us to make was a pizza flavor. An employee remembered, wow, remember that flavor that we made that was so hideous. What if we pull that flavor out, tweak it a little, and that becomes birth. Yeah. So one of our <laughs> failures became one of our greatest successes. We love a good success story. That is until Lisa challenges us to actually play Bean Boozled, where you can wind up with a mouthful of regret. And it's 20 different flavors, but only 10 different colors. So when we spin this and we land on whichever color, we go in there and take that color out, and you don't know if it's gonna be a tasty oh. bean or a really terrible tasting. Who thought of this game? So it could be juicy pear or booger is the green one. <laughs> or you could have pomegranate or old bandage. That's one of our latest. Oh! So who wants to spin first? Okay. Okay, so we landed on buttered popcorn or rotten egg. Aw. <laughs> buttered popcorn? I got rotten egg. Ooh. I got rotten egg too. <laughs> I'm going to be a man and swallow it. <laughs> Ooh, sorry about that, Rodney. My turn to spin. Is it birthday cake or dirty dishwater? Dirty dishwater. <laughs> oh. It's got soap in it. Um, I got birthday cake that time. Oh, you're lucky. Yeah, I got dirty dishwater. Oh! Of course, in the end, whether the taste is disgusting or delicious, the time and attention they put into every bean is what makes Jelly Belly a classic American treat. For me, it's been a lifelong journey and something that's very special and near and dear to my heart. You know, some people can make things that are very useful, but we make something that puts a smile on your face. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Small Town Big Deal. I'm still chewing my jelly. <laughs> Jan, you're going to have to work I'm, here. We've got to close the show. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I was so impressed. Not just with the product, but with the people. And did you get enough to eat at Frank's? Oh my gosh. It, huge plates and everything was delicious. And the history. Oh, loved it. Uh, yeah, and the tradition and the character, that's what really brings you back. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. Join us again next week when once again we celebrate the great stories from across America. Are you ready? Oh, oops, okay, wait. That was on me. Oh, yo, you gotta try harder. <laughs> you rimmed it out. Come on, we're closed. Get out of here. All right. I was gonna get it to both. <laughs>